there's one thing that really is in, I won't say amazed because it's not something I appreciate. There's something that really that's really odd with me that really it really confounds me. It's really weird onto me. You see? How can you have a healthy human relationship with someone who does not want to acknowledge reality? You see? How can you how can you be safe around someone that only wants to hold on to some facts but they don't want to acknowledge the truth? How is that possible? See, while growing up, we, are, we, we were told to cooperate, to not annoy anyone, to not disturb anyone. You see? To not bother anyone, but just to be comfortable. That's what most people get in their childhood from their parents, from their siblings, and from the school system and from their society. It's just to get along, just to not bother anyone, just be beneficial to the system. That's what the world calls raising your kids. To teach them to be comfortable and cooperate so that nobody is annoyed at them. That's what they call raising children. That's what they, they call having a proper upbringing. That's what the world calls, calls it. Well, in the Bible, nowhere, is it, nowhere can we read that God tells us to give our children a proper upbringing. Nowhere does the Bible say that parents have to raise their children to become comfortable, cooperative adults. No. The only job parents have, according to the Word of God, is to teach their children according to God's way. And, um, of course, the basic things as walking, washing yourself, just such, and staying away from things that are dangerous, just such things are such things are natural. You don't need a commandment to say that. And I need to and I need to mention this though. Because because of this false idea that we need to be comfortable and cooperative entities in society, because of that we've learned how to excuse evil behavior. We were told to mind our own business and to even when we realize that something ain't right we just have to ignore it because it's not on it is nothing onto us. So we learn or basically we are indoctrinated to give give up responsibility, collect responsibility and accountability. You see? And because of that, we have those frames of how we view re reality, how we view s social interactions. And when we, see, when we get something from a social interaction, we have the tendency to label it as good. When we don't get something from an interaction, we or it costs us something in our mind, in our from our perspective, we may label it, it as evil. And that's how we treat other human beings also. When we get something from them that gratifies us, they're good, they are friends. When they cost us something, you see, it doesn't have to be something you know important like your health. But if we just have to lose something towards someone, we label them as evil. They're bothering us. We love we tend to build these emotional walls around us to keep things private. And um, these tendencies, these mindsets, we need to let go of them. I don't care how sweet your parents were or how sweet your upbringing was, if it does not reflect the word of God or if it doesn't reflect Jesus Christ is evil, period. You cannot 
be safe around someone that only wants facts but not truth. See, because social relationships are ego-centered, need-based relationships. Such relationships are, will only lead to exploitation and resentment. Because it's ego-centered, all about me getting what I want, what I perceive as a benefit towards me. And it's need-based. As long as there's a need or a perceived need, the other person is welcome. When the need ain't there, the other is a stranger, the other is a danger. And that's where I have taboos from. A taboo is a prohibition to discuss a certain matter. Why? Because behind that matter, there's a dysfunction that we want to preserve. Yes, behind every taboo, there's a dysfunction that we want to preserve because if that dysfunction becomes public, there, there, there's no excuse anymore to preserve it. And that dysfunction reflects a defect in us. See? So when the light of Christ comes, the, when the gospel comes, it sh shines upon not only the taboo, but only upon, also upon the dysfunction that the taboo is covering and the dysfunction is also reflecting the defect in us. And in most societies, now let's say in most communities, when you break a taboo, you're in danger. You can be killed or you, or you can be, people will uh, lynch you or folks will emotionally abuse you. Why? Because they don't want the dysfunction to become public or because of else they have no cover anymore. They have no mask to hide behind. And um, that's the thing I want to make clear with this video. When you are around people that preserve the booths, such people they preserve this function. They approve a defect. Because listen, if you do not agree with something, then you're not going to preserve it, not protect it. When you see something is dangerous, you will not put any effort in it to preserve the thing that's dangerous. If someone has cancer in their body, the first thing a doctor will do is find out how far the cancer cells have spread into the body and then check if they need to do an operation to remove the cancer cells. The doctor will never preserve the cancer. He will do what's necessary to remove the cancers to preserve the human being, to, to, to preserve the body of the human being. Yet, human beings in general most people are unbelievers, but unfortunately also believers do this. They preserve the cancer at the cost of the body. And the way they preserve the cancer is by creating a myth to justify the existence of the cancer. Folks, listen. The Lord Jesus thought, said that, though, that the God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Many want to go into the spirit. That's, but they don't want truth. That's called mysticism. That's called spiritism. That's what Satanists, Luciferians, food, food, food practitioners, Santerians, that's what those people do. They go into the spiritual, but not in truth. So listen. If you're not holding on to truth, that means you're holding on to a lie. And if you're not holding on to truth, but you are in the spirit, then who are you supporting? And the other way around, who is influencing, influencing you? Because as a human being, you worship. If you're not worshiping God, then you're worshiping something else. 
and the thing you worship will control you. So those things are things to think about. Well, that's it for now. I'm going to end this video. And may the grace of Christ Jesus be with you.